I think there's some positive recommendations. Certainly, we're going to be taking a look at those to see uh, what we can do to implement and address the recommendations. Uh, we're already prior to today and you know, uh, soon after uh, the mass casualty incident, we've been working hard on some of those same uh, themes, you know, increasing communication with the with the First Nation, working with their security team that they've established and uh, have already taken steps to introduce that. Um, uh, at the testimony, uh, you may have heard one of my staff sergeants speaking to um, answering a question about incorporating family violence uh, into their risk management when they're looking at ranking offenders and risking offenders and including that uh, interpartner violence and domestic violence and that work already started uh, you know he recognized that's that's probably something really positive so we've already started looking at that and working on that so I think there's lots of lots of positive uh, that can come out of those recommendations are there any that strike you as particularly difficult uh, the ones that maybe come to mind first are the ones that talk about staffing up and, uh, teams? Uh, so staffing is can be a, a difficult um, thing to do. Obviously, you need human resources to be able to do that. And for us, it's always a balance of frontline responders and specialty teams. So you still need someone to answer the radio to go to those calls, what you heard from our first responders. And we need to staff those positions as much as we need to staff specialty positions. But we've taken a lot of steps, uh, the RCMP nationally, but specifically here in Saskatchewan, when it comes to recruiting and focusing on being able to attract more applicants to the RCMP from Saskatchewan. Um, our policies have changed that if you're from Saskatchewan and want to return to Saskatchewan, you will have the ability to do that. If you apply from Saskatchewan, your application is actually going to be prioritized over some of the other provinces at this point in time, recognizing the need here. We stood up in August of 2022, we stood up an Indigenous recruiting unit that has been incredibly successful at attracting Indigenous applicants. And we feel that's very important uh, as First Nations move towards self-administered policing, that in the interim, we can offer a better better representation of the populations we police, particularly Indigenous communities. And so we're working hard on that, uh, planning an all-Indigenous troop that will go through our training academy this spring and lots of positivity around that so that we can better represent uh, the Indigenous population that we police here in Saskatchewan. Are you able to say now if you're going to be accepting all of the recommendations for us? Uh, we're going to look at all of those recommendations. Uh, I think because there is a lot of positivity that can come out of those recommendations, uh, that we will work very hard to address those recommendations and uh, and do what we can to uh, to implement those recommendations. Can most of the recommendations towards the RCP that you heard, can they be dealt with by you or do you need to talk to the commissioner about some of this stuff, senior leadership, more senior leadership? Um, no, they can be dealt with by myself to a certain extent when it talks to about adding funding and additional resources, uh, that's in conjunction with the province. I don't have the ability to just add additional funding. Our funding comes um, primarily from the, the province, so it would have to be in partnership with them. But as far as uh, implementing recommendations and communication with our, with our First Nations, uh, with James Smith, uh, we can certainly do that from a local level. RCMP were obviously subject to one third of them, but some of the other ones say public safety about the alert system will impact RCMP to some extent. Were there recommendations to other departments that were welcome uh, for RCMP to see, including expanding the alert system to include dangerous persons? Yes, I, th I think that's a, a primary focus. I think that's really important. Uh, the alert system um, has certainly not been as user friendly or uh, had the ability to address some of the concerns. You know, it's a system that's been sort of morphed into an emergency alerting system and that has been problematic for us. So we certainly welcome any changes or progress we can make in that area and uh, we're happy to work uh, with our partners. You heard from one of our subject matter experts who has taken an incredible amount of time and invested time in into addressing that system and making sure that we are uh, using it as much as we possibly can, but we would like to see those changes, so I think that is uh, something that would be positive for us. Have there been any uh, changes in regards to photo identification that officers get access to when they're responding to a call? Um, I don't know if photo identification is the right word, but the photo they get access to in the system. 
Yeah, so some of that is technology based, you know, being able to uh, to access that technology and we are always working to upgrade technology. Uh, sometimes it changes faster than we can keep up with it because it does change so rapidly these days. Uh, but we will certainly look at that. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, having photos on file, um, you heard one of the recommendations about uh, use, utilizing other systems such as the SGI system with driver's licenses for photos. Uh, but we are restricted in what we can do under the identification of criminals Act, so we have limitations on the, the photos we can have, but being able to access some of those other systems is certainly uh, would be beneficial to our frontline members. Would you look at changing protocol then when members are responding to a call um, that they don't just check the RCMPs but they also check SGIs? Uh, yes, and it's, it's again, uh, as long as we have the technology to be able to do that, uh, you know, we can't put policies in place that we can't action, uh, that's pointless. We want to see progressive and positive change, so um, we're certainly working towards that and uh, that would be something that would definitely be something we would address as a best practice. So you were, you were commander at the time that this happened. Uh, I know you were here at the U.S. at least one of the days. Uh, can you give us your impressions about this process and how it's gone out and, and what people were able to hear about what happened? Uh, yeah, so um, incredibly emotional process. I, I think it was very important. I think it provided a lot of answers and information that people may not have previously had. Uh, that has been our commitment from the day as the incident was unfolding, to get out the information that we can get out uh, to the public, but more importantly to the families and the victims. It was the reason behind the um, event that we held last April where we provided information to the families and then subsequently to the media to be able to get that information out. Uh, that was something that really hasn't been done before but I think it was important because um, and when families are already dealing with the trauma and what they've experienced, uh, to be able to give them some sense of closure by having answers and information. And I think we saw that here with some of the information that came out that um, my hope is that it helps the families to move in the direction of healing. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen. Um, there's a lot of people who are on a very long journey uh, of healing that hopefully this information uh, helped them. Uh, I'd personally like to say a huge thank you to the, the jury members. Uh, they spent a lot of time listening to some very difficult testimony and information. I think uh, the witnesses, um, lots of brave moments up there for, for witnesses who were uh, personally impacted by this tragedy, whether it be as first responders, uh, many of my members who witnessed horrors that they couldn't even have imagined, uh, right through to family members who asked some difficult questions and relived some incredibly difficult moments. So I hope this helps move everyone in a, in a positive direction. Uh, just a logistical question. Uh, did I see that there's a new commander at F Division? Do you still have the same title? Uh, I'm the commander of F Division. There's a new commander at Depot Division. So Depot Division is our training academy, and it's separate from us, focuses on the, the training of our new cadets, and I'm responsible for the uh, RCMP policing in Saskatchewan. Okay. Yeah. So same title. Same title, same person. You're stuck with me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time.